uh, Suzy field theory and long lens, uh, geometric long lens. And I think there is some money aspect to the story, but. Uh. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, thanks very much for the nice introduction. And uh, no, there is no monetary aspect to the story. Uh, just coin appears as a kind of, uh, well, metaphor or something on the way, as you shall see. Um, so, good, yeah, I feel I should start with a, like, a warning or disclaimer or apology, so the following will be somewhat like, uh, yeah, a bird's eye view on the subject, uh, a survey, or perhaps a sketch of a program, so um, I will not have the time to go basically into any details, and, uh, yeah, this will certainly imply s some shortcomings. I hope it won't be too bad and gives you at least some kind of uh, overview of what the story is. Good, so, and I also want to mention that uh, what I want to present is work in progress currently with uh, Ashwin Balasubramanian, who's here in the audience, and Joanna koman a PhD student of mine, and uh, important, say, uh, input also is some work, which by now is a little older, well, a year or two, uh, with uh, Ed Franco and Sergei Gukov. Okay, so let's jump into the subject. And uh, somewhat contrary to my habits, I shall start historically and uh, survey a few of the existing approaches to the geometric Langlands correspondence to, uh, yeah, to get started, to get some idea of what was known before. So first of all, Okay, I mean, first of all, uh, I should say it has by now gained many faces. Uh, I sh it's just impossible to even sort of mention uh, all of them here. But one of the earliest, which will be important and sort of um, some driving motivation to connect what came later to that one, is the one uh, which was pioneered, actually, the names are missing here. I should have put here Baylins and Greenfeld and uh, also uh, Fagin and Frankel's work on the subject, which relates the geometric Langlands correspondence to the subject of conformal field theory. And, uh, well, a very rough way of formulating what it is, is uh, it can be formulated as a correspondence between G Langlands between oppers on a Riemann surface C. So C from now on will be a Riemann surface we shall fix once and for all, uh, to D modules. And, uh, good, there is this Langlands duality pattern here and the fact that the group G, um, which gives us the holomorphic bundles that we consider here on the right-hand side, or more precisely than the differential equations, or D modules on the moduli of holomorphic bundles on a Riemann surface C, that is what appears on the right-hand side, that is getting here related to something associated to the Langlands dual Lie algebra, so if the Lie algebra underlying the group G is uh, called, well, uh, German G, then we put this little L to indicate that uh, we're talking about the Langlands dual Lie algebra, which has Cartan mat matrix transpose the one of the Cartan matrix of the Lie algebra G on the left-hand side. So what are oppers? Well, for us, I mean, there's a whole theory for defining the oppers for arbitrary um, the algebra G, we shall temporarily and for the sake of uh, exposition restrict to SLN oppers where they may be represented by nth order differential operators of a particular type where, okay, we, ah, there's a typo here, this should be dy, the derivative with respect to local coordinate y on C to the power n minus 2, that is the next to leading term which appears here and then terms with a uh, well, steadily decreasing power of the derivative dy until there's something without a derivative dy. And this is a, uh, um, a differential of the nth order, holomorphic differential of the nth order, and uh, likewise the other coefficients except for the first one, which, is a, which transforms as a projective connection with respect to a change of the local coordinate on C. So these are differential operators of a particular type, which in some sense are m much better defined as a, um, as a class of uh, flat connection, which are gauge equivalent to a particular form. This just for, well, 
shortening the exposition I'm skipping here. Um, so these are what is called opers. And on the other hand, the D modules that appear on the right-hand side here, they can be more concretely thought of as a certain differential, uh, differential equations on the moduli space of holomorphic bundles, uh, of holomorphic G bundles on the Riemann surface C, which are in fact nothing but the eigenvalue equations uh, for the quantized Hitchin Hamiltonian. So what is behind the whole story is, and which will appear uh, over and over again during the talk, is the Hitchin system, which is a famous classically integrable system um, associated to a Riemann surface C and the Lie algebra G. Uh, we have on the way occasion to say a few more words about it, but uh, I trust that it will also be covered in much more detail in several other talks here, um, what it is and how it is defined. So these are particular Hamiltonians of some integrable system, the famous Hitchin system, that when quantized, uh, define us differential equations on the moduli space of holomorphic G bundles. And well, from that point of view, the point of view of integrable models, uh, perhaps a way sort of to formulate or emphasize the relevance of this statement is that this uh, Langlands correspondence formulated up here can be seen as a precursor of uh, spectral decomposition of the D modules on Bun G. Uh, I'm saying precursor because, uh, well, it depends a little bit on whether we're talking about spectral decomposition in the physicist sense, although, in fact, the geometric Langlands correspondence, well, on the categorical level is often nowadays interpreted as a spectral decomposition in a generalized or more abstract sense. Good, so uh, let me outline because um, we, well, I'd like to return to that uh, at a certain point, how this uh, conformal field theory approach uh, pioneered by Bailey and Greenfeld and Fagan and Frankel actually works in practice. So the first thing is to show and that, uh, that the affine Lie algebra G hat K, when the level K of uh, which gives the central extension is specialized to the so-called critical level given by minus H check, the dual Coxeter number, then it develops a large center, or more precisely, I should have said, the universal enveloping, of course, of this affine algebra is what develops the large center. Um, so that is the first and crucial like representation theoretic uh, ingredient which was uh, obtained in the work of uh, Fagin and Frankel. And this allows us to um, introduce representations of that affine Lie algebra at the critical level which are parameterized by restrictions of oppers to formal disks. So basically the oppers represent then the Casimirs uh, which generate this large center at the critical level. And when we take a opera globally defined on the Riemann surface C and then restrict it to a formal disk, then, well, around a certain point, then we can associate to that a representation we assign to that point which is defined by these values of the Casimirs, uh, of this huge set of Casimirs that the critical level gives us. Well, and then it's a standard construction of conformal field theory for an assignment of representation to uh, a collection of marked points on a Riemann surface C or uh, the collection of representations to all points of the Riemann surface C to associate a gadget called the space of conformal blocks, which are simply defined by a certain uh, invariance condition with respect of, uh, well, the Lie algebra of uh, G-valued vector fields on C. So that's a for a given collection of representation, uh, it spits out the corresponding space of conformal blocks. That's a standard CFT construction that we know and like. And uh, what furthermore, the um, machinery of CFT gives us then for free is a D module structure on the spaces of conformal blocks, which is basically um, a formulation 
uh, a pre more precise mathematical formulation of what in physics are called the current algebra or katsumudi ward identities. So the more precise statement is the katsumudi ward identities get realized um, basically, or what it says is that the variation, with res the infinitesimal variation with respect to uh, the choice of a given um, bundle is represented by the insertion of certain uh, uh, generators from the Katsumudi algebra, and therefore um, it equips the space of conformal blocks with the structure of a D module. And what this includes is in particular then uh, for the case at hand, uh, the eigenvalue properties for the Hitchin Hamiltonians when we are at the critical level. So that is the sketch of uh, how this is obtained and why this story is related to conformal field theory. By now, of course, the subject has grown enormously. So first of all, one wants to generalize from oppers to general flat connections or local systems. That's an important step, which, okay, I cannot basically talk at all about. Or one can talk about, uh, uh, well, categories of courier and chiefs here on the moduli of local systems on the left and uh, uh, categories of D modules on the right. Good, that's again what I shall not talk about. Oops, that's the wrong way around. Good, by now, an alternative view uh, on the subject has emerged due to the work of uh, Kapustin, Witten, and Kukov and Witten, where um, gauge theory enters the game more precisely, N equals four super young mills on four manifolds, which we assume to be of the form of, uh, say, a real line cross an interval, cross the same Riemann surface C as before. And again, let me sketch sort of the main steps in this uh, argument. So first of all, um, when one considers the topological twist of this uh, supersymmetric young mills theory, it can be argued that it is, can be effectively compactified on the Riemann surface C, and that this compactification is effectively represented by a sigma model on whatever remains, R cross interval I, and uh, the sigma model that we obtain has the target, target being the Hitchin moduli space. So again, here it is, the Hitchin moduli space, well, uh, you have heard about it already before, and uh, Good, so the integrability of the Hitchin moduli space, however now classically, before sort of we were already quantum, before uh, going classical, somewhat ironically, but now classically is known to represent an integrable system. That is, there is one description associated to one of the complex structures it has being hyperkähler manifold, where it is described as a torus vibration. So we have tori F sub P, which uh, are fibered over points of a base manifold B. The base manifold B basically, in the end of the day, uh, is almost isomorphic to the space of operas that we've encountered before, modulo a subtlety, which at some point I may mention. So uh, that is basically, I mean, this statement is what it says that uh, it has integral structure. It represents an integral system. So we have our base and over it, over generic points sitting our tori, uh, which basically corresponds in physics language to the description in terms of action angle variables where action variables uh, parameterize the base and uh, the angles are coordinates for the tori. The S-duality of N equals four super young mills has important consequences. Namely, if we go down to the two-dimensional effective description, uh, Kapustin and Witten argue that it gets represented in terms of the SYZ mirror symmetry, which is, uh, well, the mirror symmetry acting as, the description of mirror symmetry as T-duality acting on the fibers. So there is a, equivalent description in terms of the Hitchin moduli space associated to the Langlands dual group, uh, which is what represents the vibration by the T-dual fibers, the T-dual tori uh, that uh, SYZ mirror symmetry uh, provides us. So G checks, so often the passage to Langlands dual group or Lie algebra is indicated by putting checks over the respective objects. 
And uh, as I will, well, I mean, I will say a few more words on how this comes about maybe on the next uh, slide. What this allows us to understand neatly and rather beautifully is uh, something called the hacker functors, which uh, basically are uh, particular modifications of the theory descending from the four-dimensional Wilson and Tehoff loops as well as the D-module structure. However, I think, and uh, please correct me if you disagree, uh, that what was not terribly clear in this approach was how it is related to CFT. Basically, that is where I want to go. I want to propose some ingredients of a broader picture in which uh, this may become uh, more clear. Okay, so I want to say a few words about, a few more words about the description, about the framework uh, that Kapusin and Witten have proposed to describe the situation in terms of two-dimensional topological field theory. So one considers then, one is talking then about a two-dimensional topological sigma model on the strip R cross I. Well, we take it to be this one, the interval zero pi, for example. And okay, I already said the target manifold is the Hitchin moduli space. Now, a two-dimensional uh, topological field theory, okay, can be, uh, uh, yeah, can be described, say, a little bit in the spirit or in the language of modular functors. We have a category of boundary conditions that we can associate to the ends of that interval. We call them brains. The, what is associated to the interval itself with boundaries decorated by brain one and brain two, say, that is what is also going to be denoted as a HOM B1, B2, or an often referred to as the space of open strings. And now the key object, which I shall not introduce uh, in any detail, maybe Davide will do this in his talk, uh, is the co canonical co-isotropic brain. It's a special brain which fills all of each moduli space, and uh, okay, I shall not really go into the definition here. There's a distinguished brain which uh, naturally can be considered in this setup. Let us just focus on the sort of formal structure of TQFT that we shall need. Namely, you can decorate both boundaries of the interval by this canonical coisotropic brain. And then by joining strips, um, that is uh, diagrams of the following form, well, I think where we have decorated all the boundary components with the same brain, uh, one can define an algebra structure on the home space uh, with uh, BCC, BCC. So uh, we put here two incoming elements of home BCC, and uh, this operation, which uh, of course we can compute if we are defining, if we're able to define arbitrary uh, petition functions in this topological field theory, this produces us an outcoming state, uh, which is the result of the multiplication in the algebra A defined thereby. And in a similar way, um, of course, one can define a module structure whenever one of the two boundary conditions is decorated by this uh, distinguished brain, whatever B may be. So that is... Uh, another object, so then here in this diagram we would be replacing, we would simply be uh, putting here an arbitrary brain B, which then propagates through the diagram. All right, so um, that is not all that one can define, so it is all about, or not all about, but a lot is about the study of the boundary conditions in this topological sigma model with the target M Hitchin. So one can define other brains, namely, for example, a Lagrangian brain. Uh, don't worry if, about this terminology if you don't know it. We shall not need it very much. Uh, just for those who are familiar with that, I put it here. So we can put a brain, a Lagrangian brain, in a certain, in one of the complex structures, uh, which we call FP, which is supported on the torus fiber over a particular point P on the base. Ooh, this was what was reflecting the integral structure. By S-duality, so this is now sort of the uh, lightning review of Kapustin and Witten's uh, uh, longish paper. So the S-duality, which then boils down to mirror symmetry in two dimensions, um, 
maps this into a skyscraper sheaf on the modulized space of local systems, or roughly speaking, the modulized space of flat uh, G check connections on the ribbon surface. So it is something supported on a point in this modulized space of flat connections. And for that reason, precisely, it enjoys something which is called the Hecker eigenvalue property. And furthermore, uh, the demodule structure is coming from basically this kind of TQFT setup, once noticing that these algebra, and this again is something that of course uh, requires a certain uh, set of arguments to see that. So this algebra structure is in fact the quantization, is in fact giving us the differential operators of Bungi. So this corresponds to the quantization of the picture for the Hitchin moduli space in which it is represented, or an open dense is represented as the cotangent bundle of Bungi. Being cotangent bundle has natural symplectic structure, and the quantization of this natural symplectic structure, as has been argued by Kapustin and Witten, and then much further developed by Kukov and Witten and other, uh, this is what basically the machinery of the two-dimensional topological sigma model does uh, for us. And therefore, this algebra that is coming here abstractly from the TQFT formalism turns out to be the algebra of differential operators on Bungie. So this is how d-module structure comes about in this framework. Well, a similar story, uh, or a similar set of ideas, and many similar ingredients were put forward to understand something a priori different, but ultimately related, which is uh, the correspondence discovered by Alde Gayoto Tachikawa between uh, instanton partition functions uh, in, two in four dimensional n equal to two supersymmetric gauge theories and conformal blocks. So this was uh, the approach towards understanding this correspondence put forward by Nikrasov and Witten. So the starting point here uh, looks a priori quite different. We're starting with the n equals to two SUSY field theories of class S, which are the uh, theories obtained by compactifying the 2,060 theory on one and the same Riemann surface C that we have here all the time. So this gives us a four-dimensional NX2 supersymmetric field theory on a four-manifold, which we assume to be of the form of a circle vibration over R cross I with some omega deformation, which is the deformation used to regularize partition functions of uh, such theories uh, by Nikita Nikrasov. Good, and then one can think about, again, somewhat in the similar spirit, a reduction on these circles. Um, namely, when we reduce on these two circles, well, we would naively think, and that uh, can be substantiated, that we end up with a two-dimensional field theory on R cross I. And what has been argued using similar ingredients as uh, we have seen before by Nikrasov and Witten is that, again, we end up with a two-dimensional sigma model with a target Hitchin moduli space. However, uh, there are differences. One difference which I didn't put on the slide is, uh, well, there's a coupling constant in this uh, um, uh, sigma model that is, uh, we're, we're using a different Kähler structure to, def to represent the theory in the bulk, given by the ratio of these epsilon parameters, which are represent, or which can be thought of as the radii of the circles. And secondly, we are considering a different type of brains, at least a priori, they're somewhat different. There's a so-called ABA brain, uh, which uh, is an, again, an incan I mean, in one picture, it is given by the canonical coisotropic brain we've encountered before, and then an important uh, observation of Nekrasov and Witten, which was later, in other ways, explained by Gayotto and Witten, was that the S-dual of that, or what is obtained by the SYZ mirror symmetry applied to that brain is a brain called B-op for oppers. Here they are again, but now associated to the Langmans dual group. And the quick way to introduce this brain is we're talking about the Lagrangian submanifold in the character variety, which we can use to represent flat connections. 
So the space of homomorphisms from the fundamental group of the surface C into G modulo overall G action. That's the rough version of the definition. Um, uh, so we're considering a sub-manifold, a Lagrangian sub-variety therein, which can be represented by the monodromies of the differential operators we have seen before, these operas. Right, so we have differential operators. We can study the monodromy action uh, of uh, the monodromy action on solutions of the corresponding differential equation. This defines us um, a submanifold of the character variety. Now, uh, the goal of Nekrasov and Witten was to understand AGT, that is the relation to verisoro conformal blocks. To this aim, Nekrasov and Witten argued that this algebra A, which is defined again by this uh, idea of uh, uh, fusing open strings uh, from, say, the left to uh, elements of HOM BC, comma B, that in this case, uh, taking into account the differences between the case before, becomes the quantized algebra of functions on the character variety. Furthermore, if we consider the action of S duality or mirror symmetry on these home spaces, okay, then uh, basically it exchanges, well, it acts like the Langlands duality or mirror symmetry, so BCC comes B op and vice versa, uh, each of which associated to the Langlands dual group. And this is naturally a bimodule for the algebra A, and of course, in the same way, we can define a right action from the other side of the algebra A G check, which is associated to the Langlands dual G algebra with deformation parameters inverted, epsilon one over epsilon two going to epsilon two over epsilon one. And this was the basis for arguing that, um, in fact, this space must be nothing but the space of conformal blocks. Because in a way, you could argue, and maybe I say a few, well, very brief words on that in just a moment, we can argue that the space of conformal blocks can be abstractly characterized in that way, this action being then related to what is known under the name of a Linde loop operators. Well, a very quick word maybe on the nature of modular duality. Um, actually, I'm tempted to skip that in view of time. What I want to stress is uh, that uh, the modular duality, okay, is a key concept, and I believe it is really at the root of understanding this phenomenon of Langlands duality uh, in this and related contexts. And uh, I do find that there's a lot of like uh, confusing, if not misleading, descriptions of that in the literature. So let me maybe just stress that really the key point to my mind is that you have two commuting action of algebras A and A check with inverted parameters. Commuting is important, but what is also important is that they realize on the same maximal domain, that there is a basically canonical maximal domain on which you can associate that, uh, where you can define these actions, and that then both the algebra A and H check are defined on it and do commute on this maximal domain. That is in cases like, well, quantum group example here, which I shall skip, and the action of these uh, algebras A, G, and A, G check uh, uh, the case for the level conformal blocks, but in general, it's a highly non trivial statement, some very exceptional situation that you find uh, this to be true, and this is what makes yeah, the true nature and what, what is so non-trivial about this phenomenon of, of modular duality. I mean, it's trivial sort of to cook up representations of uh, uh, two such algebras which commute with one another if you just pick a large enough space to uh, realize this on, then it's a trivial statement. What is non-trivial is uh, a statement like that. And yeah, so I, I, I'm claiming here that basically this quantum group example is prototypical for what happens uh, for this algebra of quantized functions on the character variety uh, acting on, well, the home spaces that we're talking about here. All right, so, um, Kind of slow. So, uh, of course, there have been ideas around for quite a while. I think uh, uh, how this should, uh, how this could fit into a unified picture. And the starting point is this uh, uh, mythical theory X on in six dimensions with a 2,0 supersymmetry, 
Um, and when you put it in a form like the four manifold we considered before, times the Riemann surface, uh, then you could try to, well, following the cross of Witten, to put a topological twist on the four manifold and reduce on C to get AGT. Uh, I should mention on the way that, of course, uh, yeah, it is known that you do not have sufficient supersymmetry to topological twist the theory on the 60 manifold. However, it can be partly topologically twisted and it will stay partly conformal on the rest. So we can do a topological twist on the four dimensional part, leaving C conformal. That's what in this approach is done. On the other hand, we could also topological twist on R cross I cross C do the reduction on the circles and get a geometric Langlands a la Kowistin Witten. It looks like you're getting the same TQFT. Um, at least you're getting the same sigma model, although, good, there's a little bit of fine print that I briefly mentioned on the way. Nevertheless, just on the, say, uh, superficial level, one sees, of course, some differences standing out. The reduction a la Kapustin Witten should give something topological on their surface. Uh, but the description that Kapusin and Witten to see the do-module structure uses the complex structure. And some people like uh, David ben Svi and so on uh, are trying to take the idea that uh, in this framework everything should be topological, more serious, and uh, try to develop something called Betty geometric Langlands, where it is really about topological uh, field theory only, and uh, really manifestly there is no complex structure anywhere. On the other hand, in the reduction of Nekrasov and Witten, well, it should give something conformal on the Riemann surface. However, somewhat amusingly, the arguments that Nekrasov and Witten used to see this action of the quantized algebra functions on the character variety, this is using a description of M flat, which is purely topolog topological. Okay, so what? So there's a, another brain we want to introduce, which, uh, okay, as I will try to explain, uh, may give uh, some additional features and some more insight, perhaps. Good, so I'm going through the different incarnations or pictures that one can study briefly. Uh, I admit, uh, yeah, each of these points deserves, uh, well, maybe a seminar for itself, or, well, and especially the relation between them should. Um, so, anyway, let's go through that. So, in two-dimensional topological field theory, good, we're talking about our uh, sigma model with Hitchin target space. Uh, we're thinking about the picture where open dense of that is uh, the cotangent bundle of the uh, moduli of holomorphic G bundles on C. Well, in this picture, of course, we can think of what actually Hitchin called the second vibration. Namely, we can just uh, uh, yeah, consider the basically trivial vibration provided by this picture as a cotangent bundle. So we have uh, the base being bund G, and over it we have the cotangent fiber. So uh, this cotangent fiber is the one we're considering over point X in bund G. So this is a Lagrangian submanifold of uh, defining a Lagrangian submanifold of uh, T star bund G. Let's consider this as our brain. In the four-dimensional uh, picture corresponding to, well, the AGT setup, we're talking about a surface operator, all right? So uh, in any case, in this reduction, uh, well, I mean, uh, what I mean is we have a four-dimensional space uh, on which um, something is supported on a two-dimensional submanifold. And this operator, I mean, in some cases, we can there have a Lagrangian description of this n equal to two supersymmetric uh, field theory. And then we can define the surface operator by singular behavior of all the gauge fields in the vector multiplets of that n equal to two theory. So that is what is called full surface operator, which, we, which is what we want to associate to the brain B. Wesemin Witten. There's an alternative picture. Uh, this is more a side remark for the experts. I mean, in the story, I mean, one way of understanding how this brain of operas uh, appeared in the Nikrasov Shatashvili story, uh, Nikrasov Witten story, sorry, is, uh, which is also related to Nikrasov Shatashvili story, of course, but 
Uh, let's be specific, more specific here. Um, so one way to understand the uh, occurrence of this uh, brain of operas was to notice that in the uh, setup of four-dimensional angles for super young mills, one can describe the corresponding boundary condition corresponding uh, using the so-called Nampol boundary condition. And in contrast to that case, here we're talking about the case where the Nampol is zero. What this implies is that there is a global G symmetry which will lead to gauge symmetry G on C, which for the experts will already indicate that we're kind of on track. Yeah, and in six dimensions, uh, the same gadget is uh, what is referred to as co-dimension two defect, which wraps both the Riemann surface C and a two-dimensional submanifold of the 4D uh, space that we have been considering here. Let me notice that this is a valid SUSY boundary condition uh, as uh, were classified by Gayotte and Witten. And yeah, I already mentioned, uh, whereas the principal nampool leading to the brain of operas had the global symmetry uh, broken to a trivial one. Here we have it fully intact, which will lead to gauge symmetry. More precisely, the claim is going to be that if we then consider the home space, BCC, now we put this other brain there, uh, that we can argue that what comes out on the right-hand side is then the space of Katz-Moody or affine Lie algebra conformal blocks. As, well, modules, first of all, well, I mean, okay, in, in any cases, uh, uh, you should discuss the natural module structures. Here it's d-module structure. Um, however, the d-module structure we're interested in is the one coming basically here on this side from the conformal water identities, as mentioned before, so the space of conformal blocks has a built-in description of infinitesimal variations of the uh, bundle. Well, I should have indi indicated that there is a implicit dependence on the bundle by twisting with respect to a homomorphic bundle on C. Um, and on the other hand, it is coming, well, by the same machinery of topological field theory as um, via the non-commutative deformation of these algebra A, C, C are the algebra defined by the canonical coisotropic brain. Uh, here is also the uh, relation of parameters. So the level of the affine Lie algebra plus dual Coxeter number is related to these uh, radii parameters epsilon two, epsilon one, which are also related to the parameters of omega deformation by this formula. And again, uh, well, uh, we cannot go through the available support and the arguments. Uh, I list here what appears to be available if we put together what we know, but I think more sort of should be done about it. So on the one hand, uh, one can use arguments uh, a la Kapustin, Witten, Gukov, Witten, Nikrasov, Witten to sort of argue that with this specific choice of uh, the brain uh, that this should come out. That is, of course, on a somewhat physical level, uh, but uh, yeah, one can give arguments. Then there's the picture in terms of the 4D N equals to two SUSY field theories. There, this uh, claim is backed up by results uh, from the Insanton calculus uh, started by Bravaman, who well pioneered the Insanton calculus in the presence of surface operator. Then later works include Alde, Tachikawa, Negut, Navata, and I think the definitive, definitive treatment of the subject uh, I understand from talks will appear in forthcoming papers of uh, Nikita Nikrasov. Well, there are also arguments using the 4D N equals 4 picture, uh, a la Gayotte, Witten, or Cordova, Jeffers, that one could use to substantiate that uh, in cordova Jeffreys approach, uh, this presence of the principal nampol in the case without surface operators was used to argue that uh, in the end there's a constraint which gives the uh, Hamiltonian reduction of Westman Witten down to Liouville theory. Now we don't simply have, we simply do not have this constraint in the case of zero nampol. That's the difference for the experts. And furthermore, um, 
coming from M-theory description, let me mention the arguments in the work with uh, Ed Frankel, Sergei Gukov, and myself uh, can also be taken as support for this claim. This is what I want to say a few more words, perhaps quickly, about, namely what our uh, main claim was in the joint work with Ed Frankel, Sergei Gukov, myself, is that when we consider the co-dimension two surface operators, or more precisely how they come from M theory, namely as the Thacker field theory on a stack of M5 brains, we argued that uh, if we add to this to describe the surface operator another stack of M5 brains, we call them M5 prime brains, that this theory has an effective infrared description in terms of another type of surface operators, however, with co-dimension four. These would be located, located at points of the Riemann surface then. And, uh, okay, so in the case we studied explicitly, which is uh, SL2, then we would need 4G minus four plus N such uh, co-dimension four surface operator and uh, uh, located at equally many points. It will be very important, and this is part of what is in progress, to understand higher rank cases along these lines. And now, what is also known is that if we have these co-dimension four surface operators, that this modifies the conformal blocks in the AGT correspondence by the insertion of degenerate representations. This has been argued by Alde, Gayoto, Bukov, Tachikawa, and Valinde. Um, which means that this infrared equivalence between co-dimension two surface operators and co-dimension four surface operators will boil down to an effective description or an effective representation of the conformal blocks in the katz moody wesselmann witten model, which after all is what describes uh, in the two-dimensional uh, reduction effectively the co-dimension two surface operators in terms of the conformal blocks of the Verisoro algebra, which is uh, what can be used with the help, I mean, which can be upgraded by the insertion of degenerate representations uh, to a description of the co-dimension four surface operators. And this, in fact, uh, has to do with the, what is, I mean, this again, a remark, just uh, I make it passing, uh, with the quantization of the separation of variables method known in integrable models. Good, and uh, yeah, more should be done, and this is in progress about higher rank, so this is at the moment restricted to SL2. Let me offer for the mathematician sort of a very schematic view of uh, how, I mean, what this kind of suggests us as a picture, a uh, very broad brush picture of how quantum geometric Langlands should come about uh, along these lines. So that's a sort of mathematical translation of the physics words uh, I was uh, using, well, on the previous slides. So the quantum geometric Langlands correspondence would then appear as a correspondence between twisted D modules on now the moduli of G check, uh, of, of holomorphic uh, G check bundles on the Riemann surface. That is now on the left hand side to, well, just the deformation um, twisted D modules of the G bundles on C on the right hand side. That is sort of, well, that is how it is often also formulated in the literature. And uh, now sort of the way to understand it would be to use this separation of variables um, or these in physics terms, this infrared duality between co-dimension four and co-dimension two surface operators in order to get this here. Uh, well, this here has an incarnation as the conformal blocks of uh, the katz moody algebra associated to G check. And so this relation uh, called here SOV for separation of variables would give an effective representation in terms of the conformal blocks uh, for the, um, for the uh, W algebra uh, associated to the Lie algebra G, well, which is the same thanks to the result of uh, Fagin and Frankel to the conformal formal blocks for the W algebra associated to the Langlands dual group. So this on the bottom here being an identity, which is basically known, uh, gives basically one uh, beautiful way perhaps to understand the duality up here, which is more mysterious and much less understood. And let me 
admit here freely again, sort of uh, this is a uh, well bold like uh, proposal for a program uh, so far where we can say something about is SL2, as I mentioned um, on the previous slide. Um, good, let me try to uh, elaborate a little bit in what sense it helps to have this new brain BXWZ for Wesumino, for Wesumino in uh, the pocket. So, when we consider the D modules that the conformal field theory gives us at the critical level, which corresponds to the sh sheaves of conformal blocks on Bungi that the conformal field theory defines, basically what we can represent them as is a double vibration. So we can, on the one hand, fix the bundle and just ask so for fixed bundle uh, what is the space of conformal blocks twisted by this fixed bundle. So that is what is denoted like that. And this is what we would, in the TQFT language, identify with a home space BCC, comma, BXWZ. So that is one thing that we can do. But on the other hand, we could also fix, and here I'm going back to the first slide in the construction of Bailinden and Greenfeld and uh, Fagin and Frankel, what we can do is we can fix an upper in order to define a particular D module. And this is what uh, I'm suggesting here would correspond to the home space BCCFP, where FP is um, the brain considered by Kapustin and Witte. So in this sense, now we see sort of the two sides of the coin. We can fix either the bundle to see part of this double vibration, or we can fix the upper to see the basically orthogonal part. And this is what sort of these two types of brain do for us. Uh, let me just mention, yes, we have to do sooner or later um, some generalization from going from operas to local systems. Uh, some of you may heard or know uh, that there is a way to do that in the construction of Berlin and Greenfield by considering operas with singularities, but I do not want to go much more into that. So that is also what remains to be described in more detail. Well, that is part of the story, but maybe not yet all. I mean, I mentioned that somehow when we consider this picture coming down from six dimensions, we can compactify on the Riemann surface, getting uh, n equals to two, four-dimensional Susie field theory. We can compactify on the circles, getting n equals four super young mills. And in the end, we end up with the same topological sigma model, but maybe we're led to uh, consider different types of brains and maybe parameters like this epsilon one over epsilon two will differ depending on what kind of precise uh, story we're doing. Um, now, the question is, okay, uh, so far, both types of brains or all the brains we were considering they were heavily dependent on complex structure. I mentioned on the other hand that from some points of view, it may be natural to also think about a description or a story which is purely topological, which is not dependent on the complex structure at all, which is what uh, is now being developed under the name of Betty geometric Langlands. So yeah, how uh, could we try to introduce elements of that uh, into our picture? Well, let's simply note that, of course, when we just think in two-dimensional terms, there are many brains which do not have a dependence on the complex structure of the Riemann surface. For example, well, whatever is coming from the description of modular flat connection as character variety is manifestly independent of the complex structure. So we can, for example, look at Lagrangians and the character variety. Well. So then these algebra that we're getting by the picture, which is still on the board, that is the gluing of strips with uh, the canonical coisotropic brain uh, attached to all the boundary components. This, as has been argued before in the work of Nikrasov and Witten, would be uh, a representation for the quantized algebra of functions on the character variety. And so now we can consider um, here, some brain, well, there should have been an L here, uh, associated to such a Lagrangian. And uh, 
Well, this would come then also with a module, uh, with a module structure by, again, joining uh, strips. So here is a proposal, basically, how somehow the topological and the conformal story, at least from this two-dimensional TQFT versus CFT perspective, uh, can be united in a way. So the proposal would be roughly, and OK, a, a few more explanations will come on the next slides here, uh, the one in the box. So we can put, for example, our brain Vx Westman Witten. So that's, of course, not the topological story, the complex structure dependent story, giving us spaces of conformal blocks. Uh, OK, here now I mark the twisting bundle, which, uh, OK, may be labeled by some uh, parameter x uh, that, in general, the Katzmudi conformal blocks depend on. On the other hand, if we put now one of these uh, brains coming from the uh, from Lagrangians of the character variety. Um, here's the proposal, which is, of course, uh, quite bold and quite non-trivial, that this still has a relation to the conformal blocks uh, in a way. So there is a space of conformal blocks. And this relationship now here, uh, there is a space of conformal blocks, which is labeled by basically this choice of a Lagrangian. It's a subspace of, uh, say, the full space of conformal blocks, which we want to describe perhaps a little bit. And this now is meant as modules under the action of the quantized algebra functions on the character variety. On the space of conformal blocks, what I have in mind is what is called the Verlinde loop operator. So these are, I mentioned it on the way already, a natural set of operators acting on spaces of conformal blocks, which can be defined using uh, monodromies of uh, uh, degenerate representations inserted into conformal blocks. So this statement, if you want, is uh, mathematically speaking related to conjectures of kashtan lustig type. And I would claim that I can substantiate a claim like that, at least for SL2, using results in the work with uh, Grisha Vatanov and myself uh, plus to upgrade it to the S. I mean, this was for the pure Verasoro or Divo case, uh, upgraded to the Katzmudi algebra by means of the separation of variables transform. Good. So, but to give you some idea um, what I have in mind here, let us enhance a little bit our toolkit uh, in the TQFT uh, framework. So we return to the description in terms of 2D topological sigma models on the strip. Uh, this is just the reminder here for completeness. We have a category of brains. We talk about the uh, HOM spaces. We have the algebra structure on uh, HOM BCC, BCC. And then we have modules uh, left and right uh, whenever yeah, we have a BCC here standing to the left or to the right. Uh, now you can uh, think of, well, you can just look at the two-dimensional space, which is, uh, say, topological, just a triangle, or maybe the half strip with infinity added, but uh, upper side removed, right? According to standard uh, TQFT wisdom, um, the path integral over such a manifold should create a state associated to the boundary that this space has, which is just this uh, upper side that we've removed. I mean, maybe I should draw, again, some kind of picture, so we have something like this here, CCC, and here maybe our other brain B. Um, and this is the point infinity that we add. And uh, so doing path integral over such a manifold should uh, uh, create a state here associated to um, to the boundary of this, uh, you may also call half bygone, or whatever you like, uh, or triangle. So that is a state that you can associate to uh, this particular geometry in two dimensions. And of course, associated is a wave function. Namely, if you decorate this upper boundary, the one up here, by yet another boundary condition or brain, then depending on what you choose up there, uh, you get a different 
complex number, which we can interpret as a wave function of the state which is created by this path integral over the triangle. So all this is purely 2D language. Um, I do not yet know how uh, these boundary conditions, so what we're proposing here is to choose this third one, which is associated to this upper side of the triangle, to be one of these Lagrangian brains. Um, what I do not know how to describe these brains in all the other description. However, in one at least, um, I do have an idea, namely in the description coming from the compactification on C, giving us the n equals to two uh, Susie Field theory in four dimensions. Well, one could do a similar construction. One could define the wave functions defined by doing the path integral over a half ellipsoid, which is sort of negative real half line cross interval across these uh, two circles, where the boundary condition at zero, which is the boundary of this half ellipsoid, is defined by fixing the scalar zero modes uh, in the vector multiplet of the n equals to two Susie Field theory on this boundary component. So if we fix the scalar zero modes, then I, I'd claim that the resulting brain, I mean, of course, this is uh, only working for the cases where we have a Lagrangian description telling us what the scalar zero modes are. This resulting brain would be uh, denoted B with, um, well, a Lagrangian defined by these values of the scalar zero modes. What's the output? The wave function in any case is something defining on these choices. So we may put here, say, B2 being our BXWZ. And uh, then we have here our family of brains depending on uh, uh, continuous parameters A, the scalar zero modes. So this defines as a function of two variables, A and X. A chiral partition function, yeah, and I claim on the one hand it's the chiral partition function of the conformal blocks we're talking about, where a is introduced by a particular construction of the conformal blocks using gluing Riemann surfaces from pairs of pants. And this is the guy, this is nothing but that then the thing which would in four dimensions be uh, identified with an instanton partition function. Another comment on the definition of these Lagrangian brains and uh, the uses that we Okay, thank you, um, that we can make of them. Good, to fix a Lagrangian, or to fix good Lagrangians that are of interest in this context, um, it may be useful to use good Darbu coordinates on the character variety. So those were the natural symplectic form, well, I'm actually talking about the holomorphic symplectic form here, has this uh, standard form. <laughs> So this type of taboo coordinates is what was used in particular in the work of Nekrasov, Rosli, Shatashvili, and uh, well, a good place for work, uh, for, for good projects in the future is to work on finding analogs of these coordinates for hiring a clear algebra. So I think there is hope um, that we can do something for SL3 or maybe SLN, but in general, say the analogs of these type of coordinates which are useful for the type of uh, constructions I'm proposing here uh, seems to be quite a challenge. Good, so fixing half of the Dabu coordinates amounts to defining a Lagrangian, right? So that is clear. And then the statement here is um, that the home space associated to uh, this type of brain would correspond to a subspace of the space of conformal blocks defined by some eigenvalue property for the Valinda loop operators, the subalgebra of Valinda loop operators, which is purely commutative, which is associated to the same Lagrangian here. So, that, uh, so fixing eigenvalues of Valinda loop operators defines a subspace in the space of conformal blocks and that is the one that is associated sort of to the home space with a brain associated to one Lagrangian on the right. Maybe I skip this remark here for reasons of time. Uh, I want to give a very quick idea of 
what happens, I mean, all this was basically quantum. So we had a quantum deformation parameter um, related to epsilon one over epsilon two, um, which is also related, as I told, to um, basically the deviation from the critical level in conformal field theory in the Katz-Moody algebra. Um, the original story of Baylinden and Greenfield and Kapustin and Witten was about the case where this parameter epsilon two over epsilon one vanishes, corresponding to the critical level, whereas the story I just told would be associated to the case where it does not vanish. So let's indicate how we may be able to obtain um, the critical level ordinary geometric Langlands case from the quantum case. So, okay. I told that fixing half of the Dabu coordinates allows us to define corresponding Lagrangians. By Riemann-Hilbert correspondence to a Lagrangian LA, well, we can associate a, a point in the space of all operas on the Riemann surface C. So a particular opera denoted row A is what is, uh, what is specified by fixing half of the Dabu coordinates here denoted A. And now the claim is that by some WKB analysis of the differential equation associated to this upper, uh, one can see that the brain uh, that we called BA or BL sub A goes into this fiber uh, over an associated point uh, on the base of the Hitchin vibration when we take this limit. So this is how basically fixing the fibers in terms of fixing Lagrangian degenerates in the critical level limit to fixing a particular base point over which we can consider the fiber in the construction of uh, Kapusin and Witten. Uh, WKB analysis appears here and we have heard and we will I think hear more about uh, that this can be rather tricky, so this is why I put this remark here. Okay, so here, sort of again, uh, yes, I'm almost finished, thanks. Um, one more minute, perhaps. So that is sort of a math picture of uh, how then we should uh, see these relations come about. Namely, we want again a relation between twisted D modules on, bun of, on, on G hat bundles, uh, over C and D bundles, uh, uh, D modules on band G on the right hand side. And now, the, what is on the bottom are these modules for the quantized algebra of functions on the character variety and uh, one is associated to the Langlands dual Lie algebra, one is associated to the Lie algebra G, and the relation between them would be the modular duality that I mentioned on the way. And these relations in mathematical terms are kashtan lustig type equivalences. Uh, just to advertise two features, one you may not like, uh, uh, or you may like depending on your background. It is non, I mean, there are some elements definitely non-algebraic, uh, like riemann hilbert type or kashtan lustig type uh, equivalences, but there is something like honest harmonic analysis going on here. Good, so uh, I'm running out of time. Let me quickly end and summarize. So we outlined a picture, of course, containing the stories of Berlin and Greenfeld, Kapusin, Witten, Alde, Gayoto, Tachikawa, and Nikras of Witten. Uh, there are two key ingredients, the brain BXWZ, which basically gives us sort of, I mean, we have one way of fibering the D modules over the base of the Hitchin vibration, and we have another way of uh, fibering over band G. So basically it's the first and the second Hitchin vibration that are represented by these two types of brains. And uh, okay, I gave a discussion of what the discussion of Lagrangian brains in the character variety adds to this story. In particular, it gives Carl partition functions, which can be seen as the analog of the automorphic forms in the ordinary Langlands correspondence. More should be said about other ingredients, hacker actions, or more general local systems, but okay, there's no chance to do that here. So okay, that's basically all I wanted to say, but let me finish with that slide. Uh, 
I'm very much hoping to see you all next year at the String Math Conference in Hamburg. So we have time for me for one quick question or two. Do have time? Um, do you think it would be possible to figure out what the what the mirror of the WZ brain is? Can you say it again? Do you think it would be possible to figure out what the mirror of the WZ the brain mirror. is? Mirror. Okay, yeah. yeah, I was kind of waiting for this question, but I'm not prepared to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I was hoping that maybe you can help uh, with that. Uh, so. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, okay, so there are many things uh, which are, uh, the question occurred to me, but uh, somehow I didn't yet manage to answer it. More questions? Not uh, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>